Let's talk about Springsteen's Nebraska and the 40th anniversary of it. And let's go through some of the collectibles that were released around this record. I remember I was in high school when it came out and just confused like everybody else. Like, what the heck is this? Obviously, as time has gone on, I've learned to appreciate and respect and how great this album is and how influential and exactly what Bruce was trying to do. And, you know, when everybody thought he was going to zig, he zagged. I mean, that's what the guy does. He's always one step ahead of everybody. And this album is a masterpiece. There's a couple collectibles from it. This is the test pressing. This would have been the album that would have been sent for people to listen to before it actually got pressed and released to make sure that there was no imperfections and make sure it sounded as good as it was going to sound, of course, from that cassette tape. The American release of the album was just basic. It was an album with a sleeve, inner sleeve had a picture and um, it had the lyrics, but the Dutch version of it in Holland was a little more unique, had a gatefold and the gatefold opened up and it was the picture of him in the uh, hallway and then the lyrics. Now, when you open up and get the inner sleeve, the inner sleeve also has the lyrics, not only on one side, but on both sides, not in the correct order of the album and with completely different fonts. No idea why the uh, Dutch pressing uh, inner sleeve is this wacky, but it's very, very cool with the gatefold. Love it. The Japanese version of the album, of course, always cool, cool stuff. They've got the Japanese uh, lyrics and other things in it. But the uniqueness about the Japanese vinyl is not the fact that it sounds better. It's the fact that it actually sounds different than the CD. When the CD was released years later, when the CDs came out, they used a different master or a different source tape from it. And in it has underlying organ and synthesizer going through my father's house at the end of it. And that's what's on this original Japanese CD is a different tape than they used for the vinyl. Also, it was released on cassette. And in America, also released on 8-track. And if you know anything about 8-track tapes is they're never in order. The track, so if you grew up listening to the album on 8-track and then you play the actual vinyl album, it's completely out of whack. And this one is unique because it has Johnny 99 on it twice, just in case you wanted to hear it again later on while you're driving on your uh, a track and the other thing that makes this really cool this release in america was it's one of a handful actually only four springsteen releases that were released on four different sources at the same time i guess it was released on vinyl it was released on cassette that we showed you it was released on a track that i just showed you and it was also released on reel to reel through the columbia record club People like reel-to-reel tapes, and you were able to get Nebraska as a reel-to-reel tape. There was no singles released in America, just overseas. And we got a couple of them. We got two different singles. We got Atlantic City, of course, with Mansion on the Hill as the the, uh, B-side. And using the hallway picture sleeve, the Japanese used the hallway picture sleeve. And then a couple countries, Italy and Holland used the uh, kitchen table picture sleeve. Then came the second single, which was released in the UK and also in Spain of Open All Night, featuring the B-side of the Big Payback, which was an outtake from Nebraska. And Spain, just going rogue, uses a completely different picture that was not used in any of the other marketing for this record. Of course, there was a poster. The poster behind me is a double-sided three-by-three poster. One side is the hallway, as you can see, and the flip side is the kitchen table. There was also a 4x4 version of that. And that's uh, some of the cool collectibles, things around Springsteen's Nebraska on its 40th anniversary.